normalcy. In 2021, we got back to normalcy. From the first time Toe met Leather, things felt normal. Bands were playing. Cheerleaders were cheering. Touchdowns were being scored. Tonight, we celebrate the players that brought us that sense of normalcy. The teams that brought home wins. The coaches that led the way. The kickers that put the ball through the uprights. Tonight, we honor the best of the best. Tonight, we bring you the Lou Groza Awards. Welcome to the 30th Annual Lou Groza Award Celebration presented by the Orange Bowl. I'm Theo Dorsey of ESPN West Palm, and I will be your host for this evening's celebration. Thank you for joining us as we honor the best of the best nationally in collegiate kicking. Over the last three decades, the Lou Groza Award has become one of the most recognizable trophies in all of college football. The Lou Groza Award is the Heisman Trophy equivalent for collegiate place kickers since it was created by the Palm Beach County Sports Commission. The Lou Groza Award also recognizes the best high school football players, teams, coaches, and kickers in Palm Beach County. We'll take time to recognize the top performers in Palm Beach County high school football from this past football season. Now, I will also be joined in tonight's celebration by not only this year's nominees for the prestigious Lou Groza Place Kicking Award, but also by past winners who will share what this special recognition meant to them. In years past, I would be standing in front of a podium as we honor these players, but today we come to you from Orange Bowl Field at Glades Pioneer Park. Now, this is one of the best football fields in all of South Florida, which is located in one of Palm Beach County's largest hotbed for high school football. You might have heard of it, Bell Glade. Now, before we get into tonight's program, let's take a look back at the 2019 in-person celebration when we honored Georgia Bulldog place kicker Rodrigo Blankenship who is currently playing in the National Football League. Take a look. Lou Groza Award was created during the birth of College Football Awards, and our Sports Commission saw it as an opportunity to create a local fundraiser, but more importantly, create national notoriety for our county. Today, the Lou Groza Award is presented live at the ESPN College Football Award Show in front of a million households. It provides national media exposure to our county and it provides our Sports Commission with a great platform to celebrate football, not only on the collegiate level, but we use the local Lou Groza Award celebration to recognize the top high school football teams, football coaches, and football players that live in our county. The Palm Beach County Sports Commission hosted its 28th edition of the Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicker Award. It's presented to the nation's top Division I place kicker. We were thrilled to have three great national finalists with us. In addition to celebrating their achievements on the football field, they gave back to our local community. They met with many of our dignitaries and our local leaders, and they engaged in a very special hospital visit. It was really a remarkable opportunity for them to give back. This is more than football. This is, this is beyond just the, the award. This is beyond just kicking the game winners, kicking, getting points for the team. It's, it's doing everything outside of it. I look forward to this moment, meeting the kids, meeting their families. And uh, it's been humbling, it's been awesome, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. To me, I like to say it's a, it's a Heisman for us. You know, there's no better award that we could win personally. You dream of it as a kid. Coming up through high school, you just want to play college football. But now being up for the Grosso Award, is, I'm really excited for it, and it's, it's an amazing experience. The Lou Groser Award, presented by the Orange Bowl, recognizes the most outstanding kicker in college football. On behalf of the Palm Beach County Sports Commission, I'm honored to present the 2019 Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicker Award to Rodrigo Blankenship from Georgia. I think that it's any kicker's dream, you know, any college kicker's dream to be able to be here and to be a part of the Lou Groza Awards. It's something that every kicker works towards from the time that they make their first kick and people are very passionate about college sports, very passionate about college football and I think any chance that you get to be able to reward someone for being able to go out and do special things for their team is uh, an opportunity you should take advantage of. It's a great event. Uh, I look forward to it every year to represent the Groza family. My father was a long time Cleveland Brown, 21 years. He was an offensive tackle and a place kicker. 
We're just so proud to have this award named after him to continue his legacy. The Palm Beach County Sports Commission is proud to celebrate the Lou Grosser Award's 30th anniversary. This is a major milestone for our Sports Commission in that the Palm Beach County Sports Commission established the Lou Grosser Award to recognize college football most outstanding kickers in 1992 and has become one of the most college football's most coveted awards. This award is part of the college football's tradition for three decades. In the beginning, the Gross Award was established to provide annual recognition to college football kickers. Today, the Palm Beach County Sports Commission is a member of the National College Football Awards Association. The Grosser Award embraces our local community while attracting a national audience and is presented live on Home Depot's College Football Awards show. I would like to thank the Orange Bowl Committee as our presenting sponsor who provides an unwavering commitment to ensure the growth of this award throughout the college football universe. I hope you enjoyed the 30th anniversary Lou Grosser celebration. On behalf of the Palm Beach County Sports Commission, thank you for joining us as we celebrate and support this great game of football that we love. You arrive to the game. You show up to play. The excitement can be felt for miles. Crowds are heard as far as the eye can see. Where athletes can compete at any level, on any field. It's for the love of sport. The spirit of competition. The dream of making the ultimate play. Every point scored. Every finish line crossed. Every wave captured can be witnessed here. Whether it's your passion or your pastime, just bring your game to the perfect place. Visit palmbeachsports.com. We are celebrating college football, which has led us back to normalcy after the pandemic compromised our daily lives. In 2021, college football stadiums were full of people enjoying this great American game. Today, the Lou Groves Award is ready to celebrate the best of college and high school football. In just a bit, we are going to hear from our three national finalists for the Lou Groves Award. This is a special group highlighting the Lou Groves Award's 30th year. Our finalists are all playing for the true blue bloods of college football. All three finalists are playing for teams that went into the final week of the regular season of college football, vying for a spot in the college football playoff. Let me reveal our national finalist for the Lou Groza Award. Gabe Burkick is a junior playing for the University of Oklahoma. He is the FBS leader in long distance field goals from 50 plus yards and hit from 56 yards in his first two games, which represents the longest Sooner field goal in over 40 years. Jake Moody is a senior from the University of Michigan. He has connected on more than 90% of his field goal attempts, which is best in the FBS with at least 20 attempts. Noah Ruggles is a senior from The Ohio State University and FBS leader in extra points made. He also hasn't missed from beyond 40 yards and has the nation's longest consecutive field goal streak at 18 straight. The final week of college football's regular season brought history-making moments for the Lou Groza Award. For the first time, Groza finalists competed against each other, and it wasn't just any game. It was the game, Michigan and Ohio State, considered by many to be among the best rivalry in all of sports. The Groza Award was on one of college football's grandest stages, and we are excited to honor our Groza finalists tonight. Welcome to the 30th Annual Lou Groza Award celebration, which is presented by the Orange Bowl. I'm Bill Davis, Chairman of the Lou Groves Award and member of the Orange Bowl Committee. In 1992, the Palm Beach County Sports Commission established the Lou Groves Award, which is given annually to the nation's top collegiate place kicker as determined by a prominent voting panel. During this virtual show, we celebrate the Groza Award's collegiate national finalist. The winner of the 30th Groza Award will be revealed on the Home Depot College Football Awards show, which will be televised live on December 9th at 7 p.m. on ESPN. In addition to the national college finalists, our sports commission also recognizes the Lou Groza Award High School Football finalists and crown Palm Beach County's best high school football kicker 
player, coach, and team. The Lou Groves Award is one of the most distinguishable trophies in all of college football. Our sports commission developed this award in partnership with the Orange Bowl. Since the inception of the Lou Groves Award, the Orange Bowl has been our presenting sponsor and a major contributor to this program. On behalf of the Palm Beach County Sports Commission, I would like to thank the Orange Bowl for its partnership, friendship, and I hope you enjoy the show. Tonight, we recognize the three finalists who led the nation in kicking and led their teams to victories in football this season. Let's take a look at the finalists for the 2021 Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicker Award presented by the Orange Bowl. Gabe Burkick. No kicker came out of the gate stronger or longer than Gabe Burkick. In the season opener, the junior tied the all-time FBS record for long-distance kicks in a single game connecting from 51, 55, and 56 yards out. The 56-yarder was the longest kick by a Sooner in over 40 years, but it only took a week to match it, with Burkick booming another 56-yard field goal at the very next game. With the addition of a 53-yarder later in the season, he finished the regular season tied for the national lead with five kicks from long distance, one of the nation's most consistently excellent kickers. Burkick was named the Groza semifinalist in each of his first three seasons. In that span, he has set numerous Oklahoma records, including the most kicks from 40 yards or longer, and is already the seventh leading scorer in program history with 319 points. 17 of these came in this season's Red River Showdown game, where he stepped up against Texas and went 4-for-4 four four on field goals and added five extra points in a 55-48 shootout. That was one of two four field goal games this season to go along with a pair of three for three performances that includes his most important kick of the season in a campaign defined by long distance kicks. It was a 30 yard field goal that stands tallest, tied 13-13 against West Virginia in a game the Sooners never led. He connected from 30 with no time remaining on the clock, which is believed to be the only walk off game winning kick in Oklahoma history. From Chardon, Ohio, he is Gabe Burkick. Jake Moody, the only FBS kicker to make more than 20 field goals at a rate of 90% or better without missing an extra point is Jake Moody. At 22 for 24 on the season, his 91.7% accuracy is second best in the FBS among kickers with 20 field goals. And it stands by far the most accurate in Michigan history on at least 20 attempts. He made multiple field goals in seven games this season, including a pair of four for four performances. These big games came in two of Michigan's only close contests this season. And while one was their lone loss to Michigan State, the other was a triumph for Moody on the road against Nebraska as he turned a three-point deficit with three minutes left into a 32-29 victory with a pair of late field goals. He kicked multiple field goals in Michigan's first six conference games, making more kicks in that short stretch than all but 20 FBS kickers have made all season. Despite this being the senior's first year as the full-time kicker, he already ranks sixth in career field goals at Michigan. He didn't get there by making chip shots either, as 16 of his makes came from at least 30 yards out, tying for fifth most among FBS kickers. Add in his perfect 50-for-50 mark on PATs, and he finished the regular season with 116 points, tied for fifth in the nation. His 116-point season also ties for fourth in program history and is the best ever by a Michigan kicker from Northville, Michigan. He is Jake Moody. Noah Ruggles, the nation's most accurate overall kicker is Noah Ruggles with season totals of 18 for 19 on field goals and a perfect 68 for 68 on extra points. His combined 98.85% conversion rate is the best among FBS kickers with at least 25 total kicks. The combined total also gives him 122 points on the year, tied for the most by a kicker and third by players at all positions. His 94.7% accuracy on field goals is tied for third among full-time FBS kickers and would be by far the most accurate season in Ohio State history, topping the mark held by 2004 Lou Groza Award winner Mike Nugent. Consistency has been the key for Ruggles this season, kicking a field goal in 10 games and scoring double-digit points in eight. But even among that steady run, he managed back-to-back -back games going four for four on field goals and wins against Penn State and on the road over Nebraska. In that game against the Cornhuskers, he connected twice from 46 yards out, his longest kicks of the season. With the two standout performances, he became the only kicker in Ohio State history to record back-to-back -back four field goal games, 
a graduate transfer from UNC, his combined streak of 18 consecutive field goals dating back to last year was the longest in the nation before a late November miss ended his bid for a perfect season. It's an especially amazing feat for a kicker in the Big Ten's notoriously difficult weather. The 94.7% accuracy is the best for a Big Ten kicker since Brad Craddock's Groza Award winning season in 2014. From Odessa, Florida, he is Noah Ruggles. Congratulations to all three of our Groza finalists. It's an honor to commemorate your achievements this season. The Lou Groza Award also symbolizes the most celebrated award for Palm Beach County High School football. Each year, our high schools produce teams and individuals that rank with the nation's very best. After a challenging season in 2020, high school football returned to rural Friday nights in the Palm Beaches in 2021. Locally here in the Palm Beaches, a group of kickers continued their high school journey with the goals of one day joining their collegiate counterparts on this stage. Let's take a look at the finalist for the Palm Beach County High School Kicker of the Year, presented by Baptist Health. Aiden Gray, Seminole Ridge. Aiden Gray was Mr. Reliable for the Seminole Ridge Hawks this season. Gray hit over 75% of his field goals. His foot led the Hawks to multiple victories on the year. Gray is looking to become the first Seminole Ridge Hawk to take home the honor. Andrew McMillan, Cardinal Newman. Andrew McMillan didn't allow much space for opponents to get anything going on special teams. 48 of his 60 kickoffs were touchbacks. When it came to putting points on the board, he missed just one field goal the whole season. McMillan is hoping to become the first Cardinal Newman kicker to take home kicker of the year since 1995. Jake Weinberg, American Heritage Del Rey. Jake Weinberg might only be a sophomore, but he took care of business in 2021. All but three of his kicks went into the end zone for touchbacks. Weinberg showed off his boot with a 47-yard field goal during the season. Weinberg is looking to become the first American Heritage Stallion to win the award. Well, first, I want to uh, start off by giving uh, Judd a, a big go blue. Uh, a long, long time coming, but um, unfortunately, we can't uh, celebrate together in person. But I am very honored. Um, my name is Brandon Cornblue. I'm a former high school kicker of the year uh in palm beach county and uh one of my most treasured uh honors and, and awards that i've ever received uh in my playing career uh, but i am here to present this year's lou groza award uh, for kicker of the year palm beach county to hayden gray of seminole ridge congrats hayden on a great season well deserved dream come true absolutely it, so many accomplishments will pay off my mom's okay. 100%. They supported me through everything. They always had my back. They drove me to practices. You know, they were there from day one, always pushing me to be my greatest. And I would I'd definitely not be here without them. Hello, my name is Reggie LaRoche, Assistant Vice President with Baptist Health South Florida. Baptist Health is extremely honored to work alongside a great organization like the Palm Beach County Sports Commission, as well as with many different local high schools and caring for many different athletes within Palm Beach County. Our partnership with the Palm Beach County Sports Commission positions us with a like-minded community-driven organization that focuses on improving and positively impacting the communities that we serve. So it is our privilege to welcome you all to the 30th annual Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicker Virtual Awards celebration. Enjoy the show. Congratulations to the Palm Beach County High School Kicker of the Year. The Coach of the Year Award was named to honor and recognize the great career of one of the most outstanding coaches in the history of Palm Beach County High School football, Coach Sam Budnick. This award was sponsored by a local charitable organization. Let's take a look at our finalist for High School Coach of the Year. David Angel, Boca Raton. Year number two for David Angel showed that year number one was no fluke. After leading his team into the postseason in a COVID-impacted 2020, he did it again in a normal 2021. Angel had his team in contention for a district title all the way up until the end of the season. Boca Raton has had the top coach in Palm Beach County on two different occasions. Jim Basford. Forest Hill. 
Jim Bassford of Forest Hill had to take the reins from a former Sam Budnick Coach of the Year. He responded by leading Forest Hill to its first district title in over 30 years. Bassford's Falcons hosted a first round playoff game due to their accomplishment. He looks to join his predecessor Jude Blessington as a Coach of the Year. Scotty Littles, Palm Beach Central. Scotty Littles has had success in his first two years leading Palm Beach Central, but in 2021, he took that to new heights. Littles led the Broncos to an unbeaten season. That season included a district title, a Welly Cup victory, and scoring at least 30 points in six of their eight regular season games. A Palm Beach Central coach has never taken home Coach of the Year honors. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Dodds. I used to be the head football coach at Park Vista High School. And tonight I'm going to announce the uh, winner of the Lou Groza 2021 Coach of the Year Award. And this year the award goes to Forest Hills head football coach, Jim Bassford. Congratulations, Jim, on an outstanding season. And congratulations to all the finalists this year in the Lou Groza Awards. Family's a huge support system. My wife, you know what I mean? Keep me level-headed at, at home and stuff. And, and like I said, Jude, you know, reaching out to him and talking to him, he, you know, gives me good advice. I still talk to Coach Co. Coach Co was my coach in high school. Um, so he's always got great advice and I reach out to him. And then, you know, like I said, my, my assistant staff, you know, Brian Pulaski and Coach Henry and these guys, you know, are there for me all the time. You're an event to them, I get stressed to them, you know, and it's, but we stayed together. It's, you know, that's a huge, huge asset to have. Congratulations, coach. These coaches joined an elite list of coaches that have been honored here in years past. Elite is also a way to describe some of the coaches that have been a part of the Orange Bowl through the years, from Bobby Bowden to Nick Saban to Dabo Sweeney and Urban Meyer and so many more. Today we come to you from the Orange Bowl field at Glades Pioneer Park. Just a couple years ago, the Orange Bowl committee and Palm Beach County teamed up for a legacy gift with a $3 million renovation of this venue. The Orange Bowl legacy gift provides the Glades region with a state-of-the-art facility to further grow participation in youth football and other sports. Speaking of the Orange Bowl, this game will be hosting its third college football playoff semifinal game on December 31st and will once again be at the center of the college football universe. Let's take a look. Downfield for Morris, who's got it for a touchdown! Last season, the Orange Bowl Committee led the community-wide effort to bring South Florida its 21st College Football National Championship game. This was a historic moment. The College Football National Championship game was the first major national event to take place on a neutral site since the onset of COVID-19. And now we are extremely excited to have the Orange Bowl CEO join us, Eric Palms. Thank you for being here. Great to be here. Now, I don't have to remind you, but you know from organizing an annual bowl game that embodies the tradition and pinnacle of college football to providing legacy gifts that offer South Florida communities a world-class college football or high school football venue in the Orange Bowl field at Glades Pioneer Park. The Orange Bowl's committee's extensive legacy is impactful. The Orange Bowl legacy also includes the Lou Groza Award, which recognizes the top place kicker in college football and the best high school football players in Palm Beach County. So with all of that said, you know, what has the Lou Groza Award meant to college football and the Orange Bowl? Well, the Lou Groza Award is one of the pinnacle uh, achievements for, you know, any student athlete who's playing college football. It's the highest honor to a place kicker. And for the Orange Bowl Committee, we're, you know, an organization that represents South Florida and to partner with the Palm Beach County Sports Commission, which is, you know, first-class organization on this prestigious award. 
means a great deal to our organization. So we're proud of that. We look forward to a great future together. Well, it means a great deal to us, too. Without the support of the Orange Bowl, the Lou Groves Award would not even been able to be an established as a major award in college football. What does it mean to the Orange Bowl that we are now at this level, the 30th year of having the Lou Groves Awards? Yeah, I've been here 28 years, so I've seen pretty much the uh, tenure of this. It is such a highly respected, highly sought-after award. I'm not sure the Orange Bowl put it on that pedestal. I think it was there on its own right. I mean, Lou Groza was a legend in, its, in, it, in himself, uh, but it means a lot to us. The brands are connected in so many ways, and so for us, we look forward to a great future uh, and to build upon an already uh, highly regarded award. Of course, and one thing that's highly regarded, the national yeah. championship game, the Orange Bowl hosted that last year, and this year the Orange Bowl will be home of a college football playoff semifinal game. How special is this, not just for the Orange Bowl, but for all of South Florida? Listen, we can't thank Palm Beach County enough and the Palm Beach County Sports Commission, uh, the Com Palm Beach County uh, leadership for sticking with us. Last year was unprecedented for this whole world and for this country. And to have the national championship game down here was a challenge in itself. But listen, through leadership, we were able to pull it off uh, to rally everybody from the public sector to the private sector. It was a miracle. We didn't know if college football was going to be played. So to get through that was an incredible feeling. It was an uh, infomercial for South Florida, for the Sunshine State. And so to have a national semifinal come here this year mm. with a full stadium, uh, I think it's going to be very impactful. You have two, probably two out-of-state teams competing, so you're going to see the economic development with it, the community outreach that comes with it. It'll be a special time for our community. I sure am looking forward to it as well. Uh, the, the Orange Bowl Committee and its efforts to impact the entire South Florida region Obviously, that's something that's been stated and seen, but tell us about the importance of having the partnership with our very own Palm Beach County. Listen, we're in the middle of a, a project that means the world to both Palm Beach County and the Orange Bowl Committee, Orange Bowl Field at, at Glades Pioneer Park. We did the field a couple years ago. Now a building's going to go right next to it. And we've done so much together, football clinics, uh, food drives during the pandemic. Uh, we've done media center makeovers in five elementary schools. And so for us uh, to have this opportunity to continue a partnership, Orange Bowl is South Florida, and nobody owns it. The community owns it. So we're so proud of it. We have many members that come from uh, Palm Beach County, and, and we just look forward to building upon a tradition that means so much to our, our region. Right, and it means a very lot much to us of what that lives in Palm Beach County. But yeah. Eric Palms, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And thanks for pulling up with the orange jacket, too. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Honored to be here. The history of the Orange Bowl has featured a number of players that have enjoyed storied NFL careers. The same can be said about athletes that have played high school football in Palm Beach County. Names such as Lamar Jackson, Anquan Bolden, and Fred Taylor have taken home Player of the Year honors on this very stage. Let's take a look at the nominees for this year's Palm Beach County High School Player of the Year Award, brought to you by Darling & Company CPAs. Arkell King, Palm Beach Central. Markel King was a force to be reckoned with all year long for the Broncos. King averaged nearly 20 yards a carry and found himself in the end zone all year long. When the undefeated Broncos needed a big play, they knew they could lean on number 20. He is looking to join Akeem Dent in 2018 as a Palm Beach Central winner. Brian LaFrance, Jupiter Christian. If you were looking for a Brian LaFrance on a Jupiter Christian Friday night, he was easy to find. That's because he was making plays on nearly every side of the ball. LaFrance caught 17 touchdowns, ran two kicks back for scores, and also picked off four passes for good measure. A Jupiter Christian player has never taken home Player of the Year honors. Bill Young, St. Andrews. Bill Young spent a good portion of the 2021 season in the end zone. The junior had 18 rushing touchdowns on the season. He put his name into the St. Andrews record books by setting five different school records during the season. He is looking to become the first player ever from St. Andrews to take home Player of the Year honors. My name is William Likely from a High School Player of the Year, and this year High School Player of the Year award goes to Markel King of Palm Beach Central. Congrats on a great season. First, I want to thank God 
But I don't think I'd be here without God. Uh, my family, my coaches, my teammates, uh, I mean myself. For like, for like believing in myself, believing not knowing I can do it. Now the same can be said about players that have played high school football right here in our area. Now stop me if you heard some of these names like. Where did this guy come from? You can't explain that. You cannot color commentate that. You can't play by play that. You can't tell somebody what I just saw. Holy smokes. He is one of the most exciting players in the National Football League. Brissett breaks away somehow. Looking downfield, Brissett delivers, caught! What a play! To the 10, breaks a tackle, looking for him inside at the 15, outside, there he goes, hit the foot race, and it's gone! Touchdown, Jacksonville! 90 yards! Unbelievable! Adjusting is Bolden. What a catch. What an adjustment. What a touchdown. Kanan, beautiful punt. As Hester retreats to the 38, and he's past everybody. Except the punter, and he breezes past him, and it's Devin Hester's night to high step. That's number 20, standalone now at the top of the record books, Devin Hester. In a crowd of sometimes indistinguishable behemoths on the line of scrimmage, no fork stands out. He gobbles up blockers and swallows ball games. Whoa, Vincent Wilford! No, no, no! Whoa! For only the second time in history, there was just one person that everyone voted for. So congratulations to this year's most valuable player, Lamar Jackson. This is a guy who people were suggesting could not play quarterback. He's made everyone a believer. He grabs the popcorn. This is going to be fun to watch. He is must-see TV. Here's a second down and three. Jackson takes it himself. Look at him turn back and forth. Oh! He broke his ankles! Now he's got an entourage! And he's got a touchdown! He is Houdini! What a play! 47-yard touchdown run by the magical quarterback, Lamar Jackson. The Heisman Trophy Award honors the top player in the nation every year in college football. The Lou Groza Award, as a member of the National College Football Awards Association, does its part to honor the top kicker in all of college football. There is no better person to represent the award than the iconic Lou Groza, who defined the role as a place kicker in football. Let's take a look back to learn about the namesake of this award, Lou the Toe Groza. The greatest athlete to ever come out of Martins Ferry High School, Lou Groza was recruited by Ohio State and coach Paul Brown. World War II interrupted their plans and Groza never played a down for Ohio State. However, the two legends would hook up again as original members of the Cleveland Browns in 1946. As a rookie of the All-American Football Conference, Groza set records for field goals and extra points. The Browns became the first team in pro football to start thinking of the field goal as an offensive weapon. The Cleveland Press picked up on his success and dubbed Groza the toe. But his talents weren't limited to just kicking the football. Groza was a standout at tackle, playing in the Pro Bowl six times. In 1954, he was named NFL Player of the Year by the Sporting News, but in 1960, a back injury forced Groza to sit out the season, and his career as a lineman was over. So in 1961, Lou elevated the role of kicker, from one of luxury, to a necessity. Groza was the first kicker to have his own roster position. He was also the first player in NFL history to score a thousand points. When he retired in 1968, Groza owned 10 NFL records and 24 Cleveland Brown team marks, including 
NFL championship game records for points, field goals, and extra points. Groza was selected for the Pro Bowl a total of nine times and in 1974 was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It is little wonder that when the then-named Palm Beach County Sports Authority was deciding who to make namesake of their newly established place-kicking award, the brainchild of Jim Watt, it was decided to approach Mr. Groza. He and Jackie expressed their enthusiastic support. And in 1992, the Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicker Award was born. Lou was an active participant in the Groza Award banquet and activities, passing his wisdom and encouragement to our national and local nominees each year until his passing. Lou's son Judd has continued the family participation and the Palm Beach County Sports Commission is proud to continue the Groza legacy with the only national award presented to place kickers. I'm Judd Groza, I'm the youngest son of Lou. I teasingly tell my siblings that they save the best for last, being the most athletically gifted and handsome of the group. But where we are right now is the Lou Groza Field. It's in Berea, Ohio, where my mom and dad raised the family. My father was a big part of the community. This field was dedicated in 2012 and I know my parents would be very thrilled about it because they were always interested in uh, the youth of Berea. My siblings and I are really appreciative of the Palm Beach Sports Commission naming the award the Lou Groza Award because it really perpetuates my dad's legacy. He was a great person, a great football player, and really was one of the first to be uh, used as a weapon for the offense. Uh, Coach Brown was exposed to my dad's kicking ability at Ohio State. And when he started the Cleveland Browns, he knew that my father could also play left tackle and kick. So the, the fact that my father was a left tackle, I want the kickers that are up for my dad's award to realize that, think about it, if you were in a game and you were left tackle, and then you had to back up in a game-winning situation from your left tackle position, line up and make a, a game-winning field goal, pretty impressive. So. We're just so thrilled to have this award named after our father because it really continues his legacy. Uh, for the candidates, I want to wish you all a good luck uh, for the upcoming awards ceremony. I don't know who won, um, but I wish you all the best of luck. And I know my mom and dad would be very proud of your athletic achievements. Your stats are all NFL caliber type stats, but I know they'd be more interested in how you are as a person and how you are as a role model. Um, we kind of think this is kind of a ba badge of honor for the Groza family. So we definitely want someone that's gonna be not only a great athlete, but a great person. Since the first Lou Groza Award was handed out in 1992, 28 finalists, including 16 winners, have gone on to play in the National Football League, earning 11 trips to the Pro Bowl and taking home six Super Bowls. Let's take a look back at the last 30 years of the Groza Award. For 30 years, the Lou Groza Award has recognized the best of the best. You never quite know how you stack up with the other guys and the voting and all that sort of stuff. So it was it was pretty neat. I mean, it, it is the, you know, the Heisman Trophy of kicking and it's something that everybody really, you know, as a college kid, you're really working towards that goal. The game winners, the record breakers. There ain't many people uh, that, that want that, I guess, quote unquote, pressure of going out and kicking that game winning field goal. So it's a special mindset, if you will. Everybody always calls us weirdo kickers, uh, but uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, people beating down the door to, to take jobs away. Those on top of the game. Feels good. I mean, it's good to talk about it, but like I say, just to honor if you win once, you know, just, just to be there, just to be one of those three finalists. And, uh, you know, I don't think the young guys get to medal bros. I met him. And, uh, you know, I went to dinner with him, I think my first year, and uh, it was just such a great honor, and uh, he was a great guy. Tonight, the newest members of the club take their place in the record books. Just enjoy and spend time, you know, I'm sure they're gonna be families over there. Enjoy other players, talk to a lot of people, because you're gonna be in that group, you know. Be a three finalist, you know, most of the time, those guys end up in the NFL somehow. So 
and everybody else with other awards they end up in the NFL. So just enjoy, just spend time with friends and uh, have a good time. Congrats on 30 years. On behalf of the Palm Beach County Sports Commission, I'm honored to present Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicker Award to at the Bronco 47 yard line. Snap a little high. Elam's kick. Oh, the line drive. It's got enough distance. It is good! <laughs> 63 yards! To put the Falcons back in front. And Koo is up and he is good. Eight for eight from 50 plus this year from Koo. It'll be a 52 yard try. A 63-yard field goal attempt, which would match the longest in NFL history. Sebastian Janikowski kicks on the way. It is good. He got it. Ball is placed down. Dano from 63 yards out. It is good. So now Mason Crosby, who hit from 56 for a Packer record. This to send the Packers into the NFC Championship game. It is good. The Packers are moving on. Good snap. Good ball. Five 46 for the game. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kicks away. He made it. Kick has legs. The kick is good. The kick is good. Martin Gramatica. Highest field goal percentage in franchise history. He is four for four and two 50 plus yarders. Here is a 46-yarder to give the Eagles an eight-point lead. Ball is spotted. The kick is away. And the kick is... Goal! The biggest kick in Jake Elliott's life, right there. I had the chance to catch up with the three finalists for this year's award. Let's take a look. Theo Dorsey of ESPN West Palm joined here by Jake Moody, Michigan kicker, but now also a Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicking Award finalist. First off, Jake, when did you find out and what was your reaction when you knew that you were one of three kickers to be named a finalist for this prestigious award? Um, well, I found out on social media, actually. So uh, it was on the same day as my birthday. So that was kind of a, a cool birthday present, I guess. Um, so yeah, that was that was probably the best birthday of my life, honestly, because I've been working for this like my whole life. So it was a very good birthday, to say the least. Well, well, a happy birthday to you, happy belated, and I'm uh, glad you can enjoy that. What you said you've been working towards this your whole life. I know kicking isn't the first thing people are maybe introduced to when they get into football. When were you introduced to kicking? And I know you're not just a small guy. So was there any other positions you ever played in football before kicking? Um, I actually transitioned over from soccer. I didn't really like soccer too much because like I was pretty slow and I didn't like all the running. So um, I did like the kicking aspect of it though. So I switched over to football with the intentions to just play like wide receiver and DB and stuff like that. But uh, one of my coaches, he actually said that I have a pretty good leg when they did the kicker tryouts and he told my parents to kind of invest in like kicking camps and different things like that. So I kind of just went from there. Have you uh, have you talked to that coach since? Have you thanked him? Because now you're one of the top three collegiate kickers in the nation here. Oh, yeah. He he won't shut up about it. He, he loves to tell me that he's the reason I got into kicking. And he's always making me tell him thank you and stuff. So we keep in contact. He's a, he's a good guy. That's perfect. We're glad that you did choose this career path. And, and now that you are here, I got to ask, Choosing to be at a Big Ten school, I know you're from Michigan, but putting yourself in that environment where you have to kick in some windy environment and cold environment, like it's not easy for kickers there. 
Do you think that, for one, makes you a better kicker down the line here as Michigan's going to need your leg to get through with the college football playoffs, hopefully? And also, how much better of a pro prospect does that make you coming out of Michigan? Well, I mean, it's it's all I've known my entire life. Uh, I'm, like you said, I grew up here. Um, so it's no different than any conditions I've kicked in ever since I was in middle school. Um, so just being like able to kick in the crappy weather, like you said, like last game it snowed. Um, that's nothing new to me. And I think it does make it a lot easier to kick. Um, like next week, for example, we're going to be indoors in Indianapolis. So that's going to be a lot better than snow and really windy. So uh, if you can kick in the difficult conditions, it definitely helps you out a lot. And I feel like that's a good thing for like NFL teams to kind of look at uh, when they're deciding whether or not to take a guy from like cold weather and really windy conditions rather than somebody that's kicking in 80 degrees and sunny every single day. So I think that's a pretty big factor when you like look at kickers. Definitely. So it's got to help. And I know this is maybe like picking a favorite child for a parent, but do you have a favorite kick that you had this year that soared through the uprights that maybe you were nervous about, or maybe it was just that impactful for your team to be able to win? Um, I would probably say the 52 yard field goal against Washington. Um, everybody was kind of doubting us that seat, like at the beginning of the year. Um, they, they thought that Washington was possibly going to come in here and beat us. So uh, putting up the first points on the board and having a new career long at the same time was pretty cool. And uh, I absolutely obliterated that ball. So it felt really good coming off my foot. And I was just pretty excited about that one. How What's your comfort range? I know every kicker has, hey, coach, before the game, you let them know I can get it from 60 today. I can get it from 55. Where is your general comfort range when you're coming into a stadium, let's say on a on a typical Big Ten day? Typical Big Ten day? Oh, God. So we'll say there's like 10, 15 miles an hour wind. So maybe with wind at my back, I can go anywhere from inside 60 and then wind in the face, usually maybe about 50 yards and in. Gotcha, gotcha. And lastly, I, I got to ask you, you are – the finalist that looks to have the best shot at making their way into the college football playoffs at this point and even making a run for a national championship. I know this award will mean a lot to you individually, but also what would it mean to you to be able to help propel Michigan as you've been doing all year to get through the college football playoffs and return as national champions there? Uh, it means so much to us because we've been working so hard as a team. Uh, we've set high goals for ourselves at the beginning of the year. Um, everybody was doubting us at first, so it's really cool to kind of prove everybody wrong and uh, just kind of be, well, definitely beat Ohio State was very cool. But um, yeah, now we're going to like just come for it all. Like we set these goals at the beginning of the year. We knew we could do it. So it's pretty cool to be able to help the team like reach those goals of uh, winning the Big Ten championship and then eventually winning it all. Right. Well, congrats on winning the game. Um, and also congrats on being named the finalist. Good luck uh, with everything for the rest of the season, and thank you for your time, Jake. Thank you so much. Theo Dorsey of ESPN West Palm, joined now by Noah Ruggles of Ohio State. Not only is he the kicker there in the Big Ten, he also is a finalist for the Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicking Award. Noah, like I've asked the other two finalists, where were you and what was your reaction when you found out that you are a finalist this year for such a prestigious award? Oh, so, I mean, I found out the same day everybody else did. Just uh, my mom actually told me she found it out first from some news article, and it was pretty cool to see. She's got the Google alert with your name. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, I'm sure she does. Uh, for you, what, is this, what does an award like this mean? Because I know for kickers, obviously, you try to just stay focused on making the next kick. But to be honored, to at least be a finalist for an award like this, like, how big is that on your mantle of accomplishments as a football player? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, at this time last year, I was in the transfer portal and I had, uh, went from not playing in the year 2020 to now being a Lou Groza finalist. It's pretty insane. Um, but yeah, like you said, I kind of throughout the season been focused like one kick at a time and really didn't worry about it much. But when it came down to it, I started having these better stats. I was like, all right. <laughs> Works out, right?
Right, right. For you, you, you have the, statistically speaking, you're the most accurate kicker this year, year. You also are tied for the most points with 122. So how strong do you feel your case is amongst the other two finalists to actually win this award? Oh, man, I honestly have no idea. I, <laughs> I, really, I really haven't really put much thought to it. Just whatever happens, happens. I'm all good with whatever. Is, is your process, I know between long kicks and short kicks, your process probably changes a little bit when, with your footwork and everything like that. But also, I know you're kicking out there in the Big Ten, which is a lot different weather than what you were dealing with right. in the ACC at North Carolina. So right, right, right. has that helped you? Because you've obviously skyrocketed this year in the Big Ten. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if it's helped me. It's just I've had to manage it, manage it a lot more. Like I've had more windier games than I did at my whole time in North Carolina just this year. And it's like, it's definitely, um, we've had some tough conditions. We played in the snow last week, which is something I've never done before kicking in the snow. So that was cool. But the wind, the wind and stuff up here in the Big Ten is definitely, I must say, a lot worse than down south. Well, y'all are getting honored for it because two Big Ten kickers, obviously finalists um, yeah. for this award. Yeah, uh, sure. For you, it, I know this is probably this is your last year in college, one of your last go rounds at Ohio State. What are your goals as well as you kind of close this season out? Um, again, I know we talked about just making the very next kick, but right. uh, what's kind of the the goals around that as you about to head out? Oh man, just uh, to send uh, these senior guys out the right way. I mean, I've only been with this team since July, but I feel like I've been with them the past four years. So it just we got a lot of old heads on the team. I think it's important we send them out right with whatever game we have left. Now I know what you being a transfer in. A lot of times people say the kicker is one of the lonelier positions in football in general. How did the Buckeyes kind of make you feel at home? Not only being a guy that just transferred in, but also as a guy that's a specialist. Um, that doesn't necessarily do all the same things that some of the other players do. Right, yeah. I mean, kind of just showing up every day and doing my job, just having them know that I'm a guy they can rely on, that's kind of been a huge part of it. And uh, I think throughout some games where I've had more kicks, it's kind of grown as well for the team and stuff. But we got a great specialist group as well. So that's helped. That specialist group you brought up, uh, obviously you can't nail those field goals if they don't snap the ball correctly and hold it correctly. So what right. is it about your relationship with them that, you know, builds that trust up so that you are able to nail kicks on a weekend? Yeah, weekend? so Bradley's a snapper. Jesse's the holder. He's the uh, Australian guy, and he um, he's a freshman this year. And so this is his first year holding as well. So, I mean, he's just been working really hard at it, and uh, he's definitely made me look good. And both the snapper and holder, I mean, you can't do it without them and the guys up front. So it's pretty awesome. Um, great protection this year, great operation, and really blessed. I know sometimes when, when like, a running back hits 1,000 yards, he buys his offensive line Rolexes. <laughs> you might not be <laughs> able to do that, but what are, what are what, how will you celebrate with your teammates, not only just for just being named the finalist, but if you are able to win the uh, Lou Groza Award? Man, I just give them all the credit. I mean, I – like I said, you can't do it without those guys up front. And they honestly make my job a lot easier. It's just not having that stress of field goal getting blocked or bad operations. So I think that's really helped me a lot. The last Ohio State kicker to win it was 2004, Mike Nugent. Uh, how familiar are you with the award as a kicker? And is this something that you kind of always kind of had in mind? Like, hey, this would be really pretty neat for me to get at one point? Yeah, I definitely have had it in the back of my head before. Um, I, uh, we, they have the Lou Groza trophy from Mike Nugent when he won it in our uh, facility. So I kind of walk by that every day and just look at him like, man, it'd be definitely cool to have my name up there next to that as well with Nugent. So yeah, I mean, if it happens, it happens. Right. Well, good luck to you on the rest of the season. Good luck on being a finalist and we'll see who wins it uh, coming up soon. But thanks again for joining us again. And Noel Ruggles, Ohio State kicker. I'm Theo Dorsey of ESPN West Palm, then I'm joined here by Oklahoma Sooners kicker Gabe Burkich. He is also a finalist for the Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicking Award. Gabe, first and foremost, where were you and how did you find out about yourself being named a finalist this year when I know in years past you had made the semifinals list as well? Yeah, I think uh, I'm not exactly sure. I, I was probably at Logan Steakhouse eating the steak. I, I think so. I'm pretty sure that was the situation. And I saw it on my phone. It was cool. My dad texted me. Mom texted me. It was cool. 
Uh, I know I see a lot of trophies and awards behind you there. No Oklahoma kicker has ever won the Lou Groza Award. What would it mean to you and this program that has had some pretty good kickers come out of it uh, for you to be the first finalist ever? It, it means a lot already just to be a finalist, but it'd it, it mean, uh, it mean a bunch more if I won it. Like, we've had great kickers come through here, Austin Seibert, and uh, prior to that, we had a lot of good kickers too. But, I mean, it'd be really cool if I did win it. And speaking of kickers, I know, uh, you know, do you have anybody in the league or maybe that played college ball, maybe even at Oklahoma before you, that you model some of your process um, about when you go out there and kick some of these long-distance kicks that you keep nailing all year? Yeah, the long-distance one, I uh, <clears throat> I, re I really like to watch Justin Tucker because we have a similar frame and similar leg speed. And he's, like, he's just watching him. It, it really improved my kicking game throughout the past years. But I really looked up to him. Yeah, I was about to say, is that is it is it weird at all for you being an Oklahoma Sooner guy and Justin Tucker being <laughs> the Texas guy? Yeah, it's a little weird, but I mean, <laughs> game respects game. You had that 17 point game, but outside of that game where you literally tied a record, were there any other moments or kicks that stand out to you from this season that you're you know kind of most proud of? Yeah, another another situation was uh, West Virginia game. We had the the short it was a short game winner, but it was a really cool experience just to be in a, like our home stadium and have the final kick of the game. How'd you so, celebrate it then? Day? How'd I celebrate? <laughs> well, I celebrated with teammates. We uh we had a good time after the game. I saw something about you uh, after you made those three fifty yarders in the game. You talked about a pregame meal. Um, is that is that something that you kind of have a superstitious superstition about? Excuse me, or is it just you know whatever you can get your hands on that day? <laughs> it, I really I I hate breakfast foods, so I like like I'll eat a hamburger for breakfast, I'll eat steak for breakfast. That day we had chicken and pasta for breakfast, and it was pretty good. So I had to bring it up. <laughs> What's your uh, – is your background with football always been in kicking or have there been other positions you've played? And also, at what point in your journey did you realize, like, this is something that um, that I can do at a level that can be, you know, now one of the top three collegiate kickers in the nation? I, I played soccer my whole life. And then uh, in, in high school, freshman year, I just – I tried kicking the football and worked out well. After, after my sophomore year, going into junior season, I quit – I quit soccer just to focus on kicking. We we saw recently in one of those primetime NFL games where a punter had to step in and kick because the kicker got injured. How good is your punting game? And, and what are some of those things that you also work on just in case if Oklahoma needs you to go out there and punt it or do something else for the Sooners? I, I could punt the ball. I mean, like coming in freshman year, I punted in high school. Coming in freshman year, my coach, he really wanted me to switch from kicking to punting. He was like, Look, I can make you a high draft pick as a punter. And or you'll just be like an average college kicker. And so I was like, I was like, well, we'll see about that. I'm sticking <laughs> to kicking. <laughs> I you love bet. scoring points and I love kicking. So Right. Is that something that motivated you? Because I mean, if he said that you might just be an average college kicker, and obviously that's not turned out to be the case. Yeah. I I mean it pushed me a little bit back then, and then I just you know, I just Kept, kept moving, kept, kept the wheels and the train moving. Uh, for the Sooners this year, obviously a, a good season. Some of those results, not exactly what y'all wanted, but for you being able to be out there and, and nail so many of your kicks, have one of the highest percentages in the nation, uh, how has your process changed this year, or is it just the same thing and you're just getting better as the years go along? I, th I think I'm just getting better as years go on. I'm, uh, I'm finding little things that help here and there, and it's just – yeah, just improving the game. No, nothing really critical this year than last year. I mean, last year I was more focused on just making my legs stronger so I could hit long field goals. This year is fine-tuning everything. And I so, heard something interesting in one of your press conferences before where you said that when you're about to go up there and, you know, nail a field goal or try and hit a game winner, you literally try and get football out of your mind or you stop thinking about football. Yeah. How, how does that work? Because you're playing football. <laughs> well, I just I, I I focus on something completely else, and it just like I don't I don't think about do I have to step here or there like kick. 
that's just all muscle memory. So I just focus on something else and then my muscles just do the work. And lastly, I want to do, open it up now so you can give a shout out to your teammates who help you get here. Everybody looks at the kick and if the kick goes through the uprights, but <laughs> the process of a kick, obviously you need a long snapper that can make it happen. You got to you have your holder and you, that, you got to get an offense that can get you in position to be able to kick that field goal. So for you, you know, how, how much thanks do you give to your teammates to putting you in those positions to get those field goals and those game winners? I give, I give all my thanks to my teammates. I mean, like uh, offense, defense, special teams, Casey Kelleher, Spencer Jones, my whole line. I mean, it's without them, where would I be? Probably get a couple blocked. But, I mean, same like with, in the West Virginia game, I wouldn't have been in the situation where I was to make the game winning field goal at the offense, not dri driven it down the whole field and put me in a like an easy field goal position. So, I mean, uh, all thanks to them. All right, they put you in a position to make the kicks, and since you did, now you're in position to uh, potentially win the Lou Groza Award. So, congratulations on making it this far. Good luck to you in the future, as well as y'all closing out the season. Again, Gabe Burkich of the Oklahoma Sooners, a finalist for the Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicking Award. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. Palm Beach County High School football is second to none, and we have three outstanding football programs that deserve to be recognized for their accomplishments. Let's take a look at the nominees for Palm Beach County Team of the Year, brought to you by ESPN West Palm. Pahokee. The Pahokee Blue Devils played one of the tougher schedules in the area. That wasn't a problem for first-year head coach Emmanuel Hendricks. Pahokee lost just one regular season game and earned a first round bye in the postseason. Pahokee is looking to take home Team of the Year honors for the first time. Palm Beach Central. The Palm Beach Central Broncos started off strong and never took their foot off the gas. The Broncos put together an undefeated regular season in 2021. They didn't leave many games in doubt as they outscored opponents by over 200 points on the season. Palm Beach Central is looking to take home Team of the Year honors for the first time. Seminole Ridge. The Seminole Ridge Hawks did not make things easy for opposing offenses this year. The Hawks allowed more than 20 points in a game on just two occasions all season long. On offense, their running game helped lead them to an eight and two regular season. Seminole Ridge is looking to take home Team of the Year honors for the first time. Hi, this is Palm Beach Central alum and Chicago Bears punter Pat O'Donnell. I am honored tonight to be announcing the winner of this year's ESPN West Palm Beach Team of the Year are going to my alumni, the Palm Beach Central Broncos and Coach Little on having an amazing season and getting the job done. Congratulations to all the athletes and all the hard work that has been put into the season. Go Broncos! I think at the end of the day, man, when, when we win, it's the kids. When we lose, I didn't prepare them enough, and, and, I, and I totally get that. I totally love that. You know, it's never on the kids if we lose. It's always on the coaches, you know, and at the end of the day, when we win, it's because they execute it. So it's their program. You know, it's their, it's their team. We tell them all the time, it's your team, but it's my program. You know, and at the end of the day, they're really bought into that. They really love each other, and, and, and like I said, man, we're just continuing to fight to try to earn another week together. Um, but the awards are cool, but I promise you, man, like these kids, they, if you ask them, they, they, probably, they probably wouldn't even know that some of them were up for the awards. And I truly don't focus on it. I, I truly focus on trying to play and continue to play together and continue to have another week together because, you know, these seniors, when they graduate, you know, I'm, I'm never going to coach them again. They're going to go off and go to college and do what they do and, and become men in, in, in society. Well, that brings our show to an end tonight. Congratulations again to all of our winners and nominees. Tune in live on ESPN December 9th at 7 p.m. to the Home Depot College Football Awards as our 2021 Lou Groza Collegiate Place Kicker Award winner will be announced. Good luck to all three finalists. We would also like to thank Bark Escoffrey, PA, the official accounting firm for the Lou Groza Award. Thank you for joining us for this evening, and thank you to the game of football for again bringing normalcy to our lives. Good night.